Hey cruisers, welcome back to another cruise update for Sun Princess. As many of you know, we were on a 16-day transatlantic from Southampton, England, all the way back to Fort Lauderdale, and we had a slight delay, two days, because of Hurricane Milton. But we are back now, obviously, I'm back in the studio, not, you know, making videos from the ship anymore. Uh, we've been back a couple of days, and I just wanted to give you a little more of an update on our disembarkation procedure. Uh, some of it didn't go so well, and I don't know how much of it is really Princess's fault, but I'm just going to go through the day and what happened. <clears throat> First of all, they, they did pick up our, our luggage. Uh, our big, large, you know, checked luggage uh, outside of our stateroom the night before disembarkation. We originally were in a disembarkation group. They, they put people in different groups, uh, different time slots, and everybody gets a different luggage tag color and number. You're probably familiar with this process if you've cruised before. And we originally were in, I think, cream colored number three or something. Supposed to get off the ship at 9 a.m. Well, our flight was not until 7 o'clock at night out of Miami. <clears throat> they did rebook our flights through Easy Air uh, at no additional charge to us. However, we originally were supposed to be flying from Fort Lauderdale at like 11.42 in the morning. And now we're flying out of Miami at 7 o'clock at night. So not the best situation, but it could have been much worse. They could have put us on connecting flights where we had to go through three or four different cities. We've certainly had cruise lines rebook us on much worse uh, flights than this. So nevertheless, we, uh, you know, you have to kind of go with the flow in a situation like this where it's a hurricane, Princess, Easy Air doing everything they can to accommodate all their guests. And I think from that perspective, they, they did well. Uh, they did rebook us. We got, you know, through American Airlines, we were able to check in for our flight the night before. And then the next day, now we did request a later disembarkation group because we had such a late flight. I went down to guest services. They were fine. They agreed to put us in the 11 a.m. disembarkation group, which was the last group off the ship. So we got new luggage tags, different color, different group number, and all that. So I have to point out that this is the first time that Sun Princess has docked in Fort Lauderdale. Some of you may have already seen some of the videos that are out now with all the big celebrations they did the day after or maybe the night we got off the ship, maybe that evening, because they had a bunch of travel agents and media types and influencers on board. Mm -hmm. And they did some special light shows and drone shows and things like that. And I'm sure maybe some of you have already seen that. That was after we got off the ship. So anyway, we go to our disembarkation lounge, which in our case was the Princess Arena. We went and had breakfast first at the eatery, which wasn't that crowded because it was so late, a lot of people had probably already gotten off the ship. Corinne, who was our cruise director, made an announcement that uh, U.S. Customs out in the terminal building was experiencing some delays and that our disembarkation uh, disembarkation got delayed a little bit. So we didn't get off the ship at 11 a.m. I don't think any of the groups got off when they thought they were going to get off. I, I didn't hear anybody complaining that they were afraid they were going to miss a flight. I think Princess booked everybody late enough on their flights so that they'd have this cushion. So, and to their credit, Princess also offered a free transfers to both the Fort Lauderdale and or the Miami airport if they were rebooking your flights. So uh, they didn't charge. They normally charge, I think, $15 or $19 for a transfer, but they waived that fee. So that was very generous, I believe. And we uh, went to the lounge, to the Princess Arena at 11 o'clock, but we didn't actually get off the ship until probably 11.40 probably about a 40-minute delay. Uh, when we got out into the terminal, 
you know, identified our luggage, got our luggage. We were going through customs. Uh, they did not have the facial recognition systems working for customs. You could see them off to the side, but they weren't plugged in. They weren't working. So we were actually having to go meet with an agent. And I think that may be why everything got delayed a little bit. But we got through that pretty quick, maybe 10, 15 minutes we got through that. And then we ended up in this long line. Now, remember, it's pouring rain right now. They just got over a hurricane. A lot of the streets were flooded, and the rain was coming down pretty hard. We were standing in line to get on the coach or the bus to go to Miami Airport from Fort Lauderdale. We stood in line for the better part of 30 or 40 minutes. Uh, they were filling up buses, and as they'd fill up, a bus, it looked a little chaotic, and it was not very, that part was not very organized, but I don't know how much of that's actually being handled by Princess. I think they contract with a transfer company to do this. So we finally get on the motor coach, we get on the bus, and we start heading to Miami. Now, normally this is about a 45-minute drive, but weather was bad. It was raining, tremendous amount of stop-and-go traffic. It took us well over an hour and a half to get to Miami airport. And as we enter the airport, Ricky and I have been to the Miami airport several times, so we're f somewhat familiar with the layout. And you could see an exit, you know, where you go to, like, the arrivals, section of the airport of the departures and we just drove right by both of them and we're just going down this highway and pretty soon you don't see an airport terminal anywhere we knew we missed a turn somewhere the bus driver missed a turn well before long he starts talking in sort of broken english about how he had never been to the miami airport before he didn't know where he was going he's kind of lost he got on the phone and was talking to somebody but i don't know who it was i don't know if it was their dispatch or, or who but he eventually ends up in a parking lot somewhere you can't see the airport turn you don't see airplanes you don't see anything where he was but there was another bus parked in this parking lot that had pulled over and it was like some sort of a city bus it had nothing to do with cruise transfers and he's going to stop the bus and get out and go out and ask this bus driver where do i go how do i get to the miami airport to drop off my passengers well i think the guy he asked probably knew less than he did so he gets back in the bus and he turns around, he goes back the other way, and he pulls into another building, parking lot, and it appears to be something like a place that Greyhound Bus drops people off or Amtrak. I'm not sure what it was. It was some sort of a, I don't know what it was. But he kept saying, this is where he has to drop us off. And this is not the Miami airport. We are not at the terminal. We're not even close to the terminal. But he's convinced this is the place he's supposed to drop us off. He gets out of the bus. Even the security guard, there's a security guard working at this location. And there's some people getting off a Greyhound bus or something. And the security guard's even trying to tell him, man, you're in the wrong place. You need to go down the road, you know, back to the airport. He keeps trying to say, no, I'm not allowed to. I'm not allowed in the airport. They don't allow us to drop people there. This is where we have to drop people off. I don't know what he's talking about. I'm kind of arguing with him, saying, no, you're in the wrong place. He says, no, you, you, he talked to somebody at this location that said, if you go over here and get on an elevator and go up to the next floor, you can make your way to a train or a tram or something that will take you to the Miami airport. It was not correct. It was not, He was not dropping us off at the right place. Now, Ricky and I were lucky in that we have wheels on all of our luggage. We had four pieces of luggage, two large, two small, and a backpack and, you know, a little carry-on stuff. So we could roll our luggage you know, get to the elevator, go up, and once you get up this elevator, you've got about a 500-yard walk. It's a pretty good walk to get to this. And, and then there's some signs that say, you know, there's like a, a tram or a train or whatever to get to the Miami terminal, Miami airport. But you don't know that when you're downstairs getting off the bus. And he just starts unloading luggage down there at this place, and we're trying to tell him you're in the wrong place. And... There's no 
luggage carts. And there was one gentleman, an elderly gentleman, that was arguing. He said, we need a trolley. You know, we need a way to get our luggage to this place. We don't, and there's no porters, there's no luggage carts, there's no trolleys. There, I don't think this guy understood what a trolley was. So I was trying to explain to him, it's like a cart you put luggage on. I don't know, these people had some large pieces of luggage that didn't have wheels. And they're elderly, they're older. I don't know how they ever got to the airport. I told the gentleman, I said, you know, what you may have to do is just get an Uber or get a taxi to come pick you up here and take you to the airport. And as it is right now, I have no idea what they ended up doing. But we were able to manage, finally got on this train, and it's not designed for people to bring three or four big, large pieces of luggage on. It's really designed for people with a backpack or a, or a rollerboard or something like that. But we, we managed. We got on, and so did some of the other guests that were on our bus. Fortunately, our bus wasn't full. It was the last bus going to Miami. I even argued with the bus driver. I said, don't you find it strange? that there's no other buses here letting off cruise passengers? All there was is this one old Greyhound bus sitting there. But, you know, that argument didn't go very far. So it was a complete failure as far as that goes. Uh, and I feel sorry for the people that I don't know how they got their luggage on to the, uh, you know, to the airport. But we did. We did get to the airport. We got to the Admiral's Club. And we were able to sit up there and kind of relax a little bit for a few hours as we waited for our flight and then made our way to the gate. And the flight was delayed a little bit, maybe half an hour, but we, we got home on time. We did fine. We got home about 10 o'clock at night. So what would I do differently? I think, um, you know, how do I rate disembarkation? Well, the, the, yes, there were delays getting off the ship on Sun Princess, but I don't really think that was on Princess. I think that was more of a customs issue. Plus, it was their very first time in Fort Lauderdale, so I'm sure they were, you know, learning. I thought their system was a good system, the way they do the luggage tags, and they split people up in different lounges. It never felt very crowded. It never felt like you had to wait in a long line for a long time. So I, I actually thought their disembarkation process was good. It just turned out there were some delays. And then, of course, the, the coach and the transfer itself was a complete disaster. And, and that's really not on Princess, but they need to be aware of it. So they need to follow up with this company. And, you know, don't send a driver to the Miami airport that's never been to the Miami airport before. I don't know. I don't know if there's anything they can do about that. Anyway. What would I do differently? There's a couple of things, and we're going to be doing a complete review. I'm going to be doing a, a dining review, a separate video just on our dining experience. I'll be probably in the next few days, I'll have that out. And then I'm just going to do kind of an overall review of the ship, the crew, the destination, the the whole experience of Sun Princess. And I should I should tell you right up front, if you don't know it already, we are not travel agents. And we don't get paid to put out good reviews. So we don't make a commission. If you book a princess cruise or you don't book a princess cruise, it doesn't affect us financially one way or the other. We're strictly uh, doing this from a journalistic perspective. This is a cruise that we paid for. It was out of our pocket. A lot of times we get invited by cruise lines to come on board as media and uh, or as influencers and do, you know, complimentary cruises to talk about, but doesn't matter whether they pay for the cruise or we pay for the cruise, we're going to tell you what we think about it. So I'll tell you right up front that we're not travel agents. We don't sell cruises. Uh, so we don't stand to benefit anything one way or the other. We don't stand to lose anything one way or the other. We're going to pretty much tell you the way we see it. And I think you're going to get a completely different viewpoint of this ship from us than you're going to find in most places on the Internet. So, and we'll talk about that later, and you're welcome to put comments down below if you have any questions about that. But basically, um, one thing about disembarkation, I wish Princess would change. I wish they would have given us a printed folio at the end of the cruise, like a lot of cruise lines do. 
and I don't buy the excuse that they're trying to save on paper because they send us a patter every day in the room. They're, they're using a lot of paper on that ship. So it would have been nice to have a folio because once you're off the ship, you can't pull up the app and see what your folio is. So I know that I had about 180 some dollars of refundable shipboard credit, but I have no documentation. I can't go back to Princess right now and say, oh, by the way, I've got this refundable credit. They're going to say, well, where's your documentation? I don't have any because I didn't get a printed folio at the end of the cruise. I pulled it up on my phone and I should have saved it as a PDF, and I didn't. My bad. But uh, one thing I would uh, like to see Princess do in the future is give everybody a printout of their folio uh, before they get off the ship. So, Or make the app where you can get to it from home and pull up your folio or through the website or however. I, there should be a way to, for me to get my folio right now. And I don't know how to do that. If you know how to do that, let me know in the comments down below. Maybe I just don't know how to do it. Okay, that's it. That's my update for today. I hope you enjoyed it. If you uh, Don't forget, if you haven't done so already, please click that little subscribe button down below. Don't forget the notification bell. That way you'll get notified, uh, notified <laughs> not notified, but notified when we come out with a brand new video, and we will be coming out with some new videos soon. I've still got some videos to do on Silver Sea, on our Silver Ray Cruise, and that will be coming as well, but the Sun Princess thing kind of got in the way, and, and so everything's kind of been pushed back a little bit. I apologize. Thanks for joining me. If you have any questions, put them in the comments down below, and if you enjoyed this video, do me a favor, please give it a thumbs up. That really does help the YouTube channel. Thanks for joining me, and until I see you next time, Smooth sailing.